Hi everyone, I'm Dr. Babita and today's video is on neuroophthalmology. In this video, we will learn the difference between true Foster Kennedy syndrome and pseudo Foster Kennedy syndrome. This was my professor's favorite question to ask in ward rounds, so I thought why not make a video on the same topic for all of you. So in true Foster Kennedy syndrome, the patient has optic atrophy in one eye and optic disc edema in the other eye. These patients have a frontal lobe tumor and that tumor presses on the optic nerve on the same side to cause compressive optic atrophy. But sometimes this tumor is quite large and that causes increase in intracranial pressure and this increased intracranial pressure causes papilledema leading to optic disc swelling in the opposite eye. So this condition in which one eye has optic atrophy and the other eye has optic disc edema secondary to a frontal lobe tumor is known as true Foster Kennedy syndrome or simply Foster Kennedy syndrome. So what happens in pseudo Foster Kennedy syndrome? So in pseudo Foster Kennedy syndrome, again, the patient has optic atrophy in one eye and optic disc swelling in the other eye. But here, the reason behind this is not a frontal lobe tumor. Suppose a patient gets an attack of AION. AION is anterior ischemic optic neuropathy. So the patient gets an attack of AION in one eye and AION causes optic disc edema in the acute stage and eventually leads to optic atrophy. And then a couple of years later, this patient gets an attack of AION in the opposite eye. So when you will examine this patient, you will see that his one optic disc is atrophic because of the past attack of AION and his other optic disc is edematous because of the recent attack of AION. This is not due to a frontal lobe tumor because the MRI is normal. These patients are typically middle-aged with history of diabetes and hypertension and the type of AION commonly associated with pseudo Foster Kennedy syndrome is non-arthritic AION. So how will you differentiate between the two? Foster Kennedy syndrome and pseudo Foster Kennedy syndrome. First of all, the vision loss in pseudo Foster Kennedy syndrome will be sequential. Means both eyes are not affected together at the same time. The patient will give you history of vision loss in one eye few years ago and now he has vision loss in the other eye. Secondly, the edematous eye in Foster Kennedy syndrome will have good vision because it is papilledema and not papillitis, while vision loss in the eye with optic disc edema will be profound in pseudo Foster Kennedy syndrome because the cause is AION. Lastly, of course, on MRI, you will find a frontal lobe tumor in Foster Kennedy syndrome, while a mass lesion would be absent in a pseudo Foster Kennedy syndrome. So, do you know of any other conditions that can also cause Foster Kennedy syndrome apart from a frontal lobe tumor? If you do, let me know in the comment section below. So, this was about Foster Kennedy syndrome and pseudo Foster Kennedy syndrome. Please like and share this video with your friends and colleagues if you found it useful. And please subscribe to my channel to support free education. Thank you very much.